guys welcome back to the channel today we're talking about the v1 app boom v1 gang specifically so being a brand ambassador uh, i always recommend this tool because I, I have full belief in it so what we're going to do is i'm just going to kind of step you through a couple of holes on how i use the app so so when i'm looking at my app i'm seeing 222 is about where i want to hit it and that's going to leave me 151 in but it's downhill so it's probably going to be more like one 43 ish in so that tells me that I want you can kind of see the line so looking at the line on the left side of the screen you'll see that I, I have plenty of room to the left of that tree to get past it on that line so let's see if I can hit my three hybrid about 225 30 downhill, no wind to really mess with it, so we're just going to get a piece of pitch and punch. Okay. Little, I'm aiming about a foot outside on the left. All right, so now that the uh, hole is over, I'm gonna go in and mark the score. That was a bogey because of that two putt, but remember I, how I brought up that the putt was about six feet, so I actually track my first putt from six foot. And I put two putts, and that first one went past it. And then what I can do is come over here to this pencil and go down and if I need to modify that was about a three foot putt so now I've actually tracked all of my putts and distances and I can export that and, and have that for my stats so very important so on the uh, on this part three what I'm looking at is 163 to the flag and I'm using my app 163 but from where I'm standing it's probably about 157 center so I want to hit to the back that's pretty good for pressure we just joined up with two guys how about that huh all right so I've noted that I am about 16 feet on this first putt Fancy. Love that I got a birdie. Needed that mentally. So I'm going to mark that down. And remember, again, 16 feet. This kind of usually picks up on where you're at. Um, have a one putt save. And so on to this par five. So as you can see, it's it's forever down there. And uh, that's kind of the line I want to look at. So when you're actually looking at what you're seeing on the screen, I want to take it kind of just to the left of those trees, and that should leave me a pretty good distance. So let's see if I can make it work the way I think it should. All right, just pound the driver. comes together. Okay, so another nice thing here is where my playing partner is. You can see on the screen, I can't see where the flag is, but you can use this to align what line you want to use. So, very important. Okay, so another thing I'm using this for is I'm setting that 205 over there. And it says two tens back, 194 center. So I know if I can land it around 193, that's what I want to aim for, not the actual flag distance. So 
I'll use the front metal back a lot in conjunction with my wrench finder. One thing that I will add is in the upper left hand corner, it's not tournament legal, but you can actually see the direction of the wind. How fabulous is that? Bird by the skin of my teeth. Two birds. How about that? That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so I'm back. I'm home. I always wait to get home because I don't want to do this at the course and I actually remember every shot. So starting from that first hole we started videoing, um, I know that I hit a three hybrid and that went down to 123 and I hit a pitching wedge and then shipped and putted. Now one thing that I noted when I was doing my putting was that I actually did put it from six feet. I made that adjustment. Now another thing that you can do is you can zoom in on this and move the flag to where it was. So it gives you a little more indication on exactly where the things are at. So now that I have that, I'm going to progress to the next one. And here, you'll notice that sometimes it shows that green plus with a circle is actually where it thought I hit the ball, but that was not where I hit the ball. I hit the ball from there. It was a seven iron into the wind, 157. The flag was there and my ball was there. And I made the darn birdie. How awesome was that? Um, so there's nothing to adjust here because when I entered it, I actually said it was, ah, it actually changed the, the feet on it. So it was a 16 foot putt. All right, so we got that updated, done. On to the par five. All right, so you always want to check and validate that where this said you hit it is where you hit it and really I hit it back here and that was my driver 276 up to here the second shot was my five iron <laughs> however I did it I hit the green um, the flag was here my shot was here one of the best shots I've hit the, this last six months, for sure. Um, two putted though, you know, you saw me do that. Um, so, let's just double check. The first putt was at 23 feet, and then it was a two foot tap in. And that's it. It's that simple. I'll go through and, and map every hole that I do. And what you can do with this is when you're done with it, there's actually a way to export every single shot, including the measurements of each of them, into a, a CSV, and then you can convert it into a, an Excel spreadsheet or into sheets um, if you're a Mac user. Um, so super helpful data. The thing you have to remember though is context, right? So like on this par five, I hit it 276, but the context you don't see here is that was uphill. That was a significant uphill shot. So it was probably straight, it was probably about 290 and 295. So you kind of have to remember that that five iron that went 198, there was, um, it was downhill and it was playing like probably about 196 to the flag. I hit it 198. Um, so it was off to the right, but there's a lot of things you have to take into consideration. And one of the things I did want to point out is back on this par four, you'll see I didn't mark that three. I didn't put a club on it. Um, that's considered a recovery shot. 
or you can also say no club or chip because if I put in the club then it's going to bring my average down so what I can do is click on analyze and look at all the history so I'm seeing all my strokes gained you can change the date range and everything uh, I'm referencing a tour pro so my strokes gains are horrible which is acceptable um, versus you know I, if I were on tour then obviously this channel would be different it would be on the tour what, what's gonna happen when I actually make it what am I gonna call it is it gonna say chasing the tour because I'm still chasing it I'll still be chasing it even though I'm playing on it positivity one of the biggest things I'm working on this year mental game okay so you also see at the bottom you have this club data and so what this is doing is it's actually tracking what is min max median obviously somewhere I did not hit a driver 1054 yards so there are some invalid ones like this seven iron that was 921 sometimes I've noticed that it will move a shot to like totally another hole because I'll do something funky on the screen user error not not the apps error but so my driver is 262 on average three woods three 228 my three hybrids 214 and so you can see you can see all the numbers here um, so that will give you an indication and if you upgrade you can actually have a caddy uh, version of this that will say based on where you're at and the yardages you should hit a seven iron so that is pretty dang cool it's like you're actually have a caddy on tour um, can't use that in a in a professional event so I don't use it because I don't want to I don't want to rely on it but here is what I was talking about with the export the shot table you can actually go through and export all of the data that backs all of this up and you can also go in by round and do that as well but for you data junkies this is awesome so guys I'm glad that you watched this all the way to the end so I'm truly an ambassador for V1 because I believe in the products right I use them I'm not I'm not making any money off of telling you to use it. That, that's not how V1 Golf works. But I would highly recommend it. And of all things, no matter where your ball goes, just keep it findable. Aim to the right spot to keep it findable. Guys, we'll talk to you later.